good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to First Assembly this morning. The presence of the Lord is in this place. And we had service earlier, and I'm telling you, you're in for a treat this morning. So let's just stand and ask the Lord to, to meet us here in this place again. So, Father, here we stand before you today, God, in your presence, Lord. You said there's fullness of joy. And, God, we commit this time to you. We commit this service to you. Thank you that your presence is here, God. I pray for everyone in this room that they, would, when they leave and those that hear us on TV, Lord, that they would just feel the joy of the Lord. They feel your presence. And we're going to give you praise and honor. And God's people said, amen, amen. Well, welcome this morning. We're so honored that you would join us online or here in person. I just ask that today you would set this time aside that to really focus on why we're here, who we get to worship today, that we would not take that for granted, that we would just really press in this morning to this presence. We thank you, Lord. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but only trust in Jesus name let's sing Christ alone Christ alone cornerstone the weak made strong in the same
give him praise this morning. We thank you, God. In our weakness, you will be strong, Lord. We thank you, God. I count on the one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. He won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God that never fails is working on. That's hard sometimes. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Let's press in this morning. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. He won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God is never late. Working all things out, yes. working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy. you today I hope that you never take this opportunity for granted that we have today we have this moment to praise him we thank you Father God I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound, drenched in tears. They laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone. Messiah still and all alone. Let's praise his name this morning. 
no higher name than the name of Jesus. All their names bow at the foot of the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for your presence in this place. Y'all, we thank you for songs, Lord Jesus, that remind us of what you have done for us on Calvary, Lord. God, you are our cornerstone. God, we choose to praise you in all circumstances, Lord Jesus. We bless your holy name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. You may be seated. Good morning, BFA. We're so excited that you joined us this morning, whether it's online or in the building. We're just glad that you joined us. If this is your first time with BFA, we'd love to get to know you more, and we'd love for you to get to know us more. So if you text the word next steps, all one word, next steps to 94090, 
You'll learn more about BFA and what your next steps are here to get to know us. Also, if you're wondering where our church bulletin is, due to the current circumstances, we can't hand any church bulletins out. But if you'd like to see a bulletin, a digital bulletin, you can text the words weekly update, all one word, weekly update to 94090, and you can get a digital copy of our weekly bulletin. Also, don't forget, tonight we're gonna have prayer service at 5.30 p.m. online and in person. We're interceding, we're praying for those that we love, our country, our city. We're just praying that COVID would go away in the name of Jesus. So please join us online or in person here in the building at 5.30 p.m. tonight. Also, don't forget, every Wednesday, we have our midweek service at 6.30 p.m. online. Pastor James is starting a new Bible study on the book of Galatians. So you don't want to miss it. 6.30 every Wednesday online. Calling all youth. We haven't forgotten about you. We have something every Wednesday night for the youth. A BFA Youth Watch Party at 6.30 p.m. Be sure to join us. If you need a link, call the church office or you can go to our website and go to the BFA Youth page and you can find the information there. Also, just wanted to let you know at the end of service today, we will be taking communion. So whatever you have at your home, if you don't have a communion elements, you can grab some hot Cheetos and some Kool-Aid or some crackers and some water, whatever you have, you can take communion with us at the end of service today online at home but for you here you get to work with this thing and try to open it for 15 minutes before we take communion please don't forget to like and subscribe to our facebook youtube and instagram pages doing so will keep you up to date on all announcements we have throughout the week this has been your bfa weekly update Well, it's great to see the video announcements are back. Yes. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Brock Metters, and I serve on the board of directors. I'm here to inform you of an important event coming up here with the re-election vote of Pastor James. A re-election vote, oh, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself here. I have a letter here that will be going out to everyone should receive it tomorrow or Tuesday, as well as an email that's going out today with the same contents. So I figured I would just kind of read some of the highlights of the letter just for consistency. So a re-election vote is required for Pastor James in accordance with the church bylaws. As stated in the bylaws, the initial term of the lead pastor's office is for three years, and a vote of re-election is required on the three-year anniversary. The succeeding term of office is for an indefinite period. Pastor James began his term January 2018, so just three years ago. Now with the ongoing COVID restrictions, the board is wholly committed to facilitating a safe voting environment involving minimal contact. Please note that there will not be a special business meeting as would normally take place. Now, two options are available for the voting members of the church. An absentee ballot may be requested, as usual, from the church office. Absentee ballots returned by mail must be received back in the church office no later than Friday, January 22nd, to ensure we have it in the time. Members may also choose to vote in person on the day of the re-election, Sunday, January 24th. That's two weeks from today in the church foyer uh, between 8 o'clock a.m. and 12 o'clock, or 12.45 p.m. So that's before, between, and after the regular morning services. Absentee ballots may also be returned during this time if you weren't able to get it in the mail early enough. Now, a quorum will be determined by counting the total number of ballots. And then later in that day, we will have the, ele the election results sent out via email and letter. So be, please be in prayer over our church and this election process going forward. Now at this time, I would like to receive our morning's tithe and offering and missions giving. We thankful, thank you for your continued faithfulness during this time. You may use the white boxes along the back wall we have the text to give, the app, you can go online, or of course you can mail in your contribution to the church office. Let's ask for the Lord's blessing. 
Father God, we thank you so much for this time to be together so that we can gather here in your name and worship you, Lord, with our friends and family. We thank you for our church and for our pastors, Lord, and for each and every one of our, our members and all of those who are here this morning with us. We just ask for your blessing to be over this offering. May it be used to further your kingdom, Lord. And we ask for uh, your anointing to be upon Pastor James as he brings the word of God this morning to us. And we thank you. We lift up all of these things. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You're welcome to stand if you'd like to, to worship with us. And you're also, it's okay if you need to sit down as well. But uh, I don't know about you, but I, I love being in the presence of the Lord. And so we're going to invite him into this place. We thank you. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come from this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Tasted and seen all the sweetest sound loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. It's in your presence, your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit. Glory of your goodness, let us become. 
are ready to receive your word today. We thank you for your presence, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your spirit that moves today in our hearts and our lives, Lord Jesus. May we receive your word today, Lord. May we not leave here the same. For this is the day the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Can we give him some praise this morning? We bless you. We thank you. We thank you. I can't, can't, can't explain what the presence of the Lord does for you and me. Let's not take these moments for granted. Let's push in to his presence. We thank you. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before I get into my message this morning, I think it's pertinent that we would pray for our nation. I mean, you know, it's, it's critical that, that we need the Lord. Uh, there's a lot of questions and division, and the Bible says God is not a God of disorder, but a God of peace, and yet we see so much turmoil and dishonesty and things going on, it's hard to know what the truth is. That's why it's so important that in this day we stand on God's word. Because God's word is truth, and it's always true. It's Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Though it's been written over thousands of years, it is still applicable today. And when there's not a news media you can trust or know who's telling the truth, God always tells the truth. So let's pray. God, we care for our nation. We thank you for the United States of America. And Lord, we are in a difficult, divisive time, Lord. And we just pray in Jesus' name that you would be glorified above all the din and clamor and noise, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, you have commanded us to pray for the leaders of our nation, and so we do. We are faithful in that. And we ask that the leaders of our nation would have a holy fear of God. Lord, that they would want to do your will and not the will of the people, but God, to do what is right and true according to your word. And so, Father, we stand in the gap, and Lord, I pray you would help us. As Christians, we don't know what to say. Sometimes if we say something, we'll be, we'll be destroyed for it. And so, Lord, I just pray you would guide us in these days. These are difficult days, Lord, and I pray that we, your people, would navigate these days with truth, with faith, not fear, not intimidation, God, that the church would not be silenced, but the word of God would go forth bolder and, and louder than ever before in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we pray for this land, this world, God, and just ask, God, be glorified. You be lifted up, Lord. We want you to be lifted up. And so teach us, Lord, how to pray. Guide us in prayer. In Jesus' name, we, we ask these things. Amen and amen. I am speaking on the day of the Lord for the next several weeks. Uh, this message was partly inspired by my Son-in-law, who did a great job last Sunday, I'm not just being, it's not just nepotism, he, he ministered to me uh, about through Psalms 91, but this message is also inspired by current events that are going on in the world today. A few years ago, I wrote a research paper for seminary on the day of the Lord, and it so struck me and so intrigued me and so challenged me, and I want to share some of those thoughts with you as well as uh, insight the Lord has given me since then. So let's look, first of all, number one, at the definition of the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord, that phrase, that exact phrase, is mentioned over 25 times in the Old and New Testaments. 
Therefore, this is not just a past event, but a future occurrence as well. We see that the day of the Lord in the Old Testament is first introduced in Isaiah chapter 13, verse 6, which says this, Wail, for the day of the Lord is near. It will come like destruction from the Almighty. However, that same phrase is mentioned multiple times in the New Testament. So it's not just Old Testament teaching or prophecy. This is also mentioned in the New Testament multiple times. For example, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Now, brothers, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. And so it is also referenced, this phrase, the day of the Lord, by synonymous phrases, such as the day, or that day, the great day, the great and glorious day, the day of Christ, the day of Jesus Christ, the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, and other synonymous terms that are speaking of the day of the Lord. And when you add in these phrases, the discussion in the Bible of the day of the Lord more than doubles. So how many know if God said something 50 times, he really wants us to know it, to understand it, and to study it? Now, I want to give you just a brief definition of the day of the Lord. We're going to expand on it on the weeks ahead, but here is a concise definition of the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord refers not just to a literal day in time or a one-time event in history, but applies to times, plural, when God would particularly manifest himself, usually in judgment and vengeance on his enemies, but also in deliverance of God's remnant, both in ancient times and in a time to come. And so in that context, there were several days of the Lord that happened in the Old Testament. For example... The fall of Jerusalem to Babylon in 597 A.D., that was prophesied by God's prophets. They warned Judah, they warned the people of Jerusalem to stop worshiping idols and to serve the one true God, but because they didn't, after years, uh, centuries of warning, then they were sent into captivity, and the prophets prophesied about this day of the Lord, and so that was one of those days of the Lord where God's judgment visited the earth. Many prophets, including Ezekiel, Amos, Obadiah, Zephaniah, Zechariah, Malachi. Whoa, I love those names, how they just flow like that. And especially the prophet Joel warned Israel and Judah about the day of the Lord. And in the New Testament, it's mentioned in the book of Acts, in First and Second Corinthians, First and Second Thessalonians, Philippians and Second Peter as well. And so since the day of the Lord is mentioned so prolifically, surely God wants us to know about it, understand it, and of course, prepare for it. And so we hear other terms like the rapture or the second coming, and how, do, how is that distinct or is it synonymous with the day of the Lord? We're going to study that as well. There have been several days of the Lord where God's vengeance and judgment visited the earth But there will be a specific day of the Lord. There is a day and there is the day. And we are now awaiting that final day of the Lord. The second point I want to make this morning, number two, is the dynamics of the day of the Lord. What are the characteristics of that day? How will it affect us? Will it it just be localized or will it affect, affect the entire world? How will it influence the church? Where will the church be during the day of the Lord? I want to give a further uh, explanation of the day of the Lord by Willem A. Van Gameren. He says this, the day of the Lord, Yom Yahweh in Hebrew, is the era in which the Lord judges, purifies a remnant for himself, avenges his name, vindicates his people, renews his creation, brings in the full deliverance, and establishes his rule on the earth. Wow, that's a mouthful. But that, all of that encompasses the day of the Lord when God avenges his name. How I many know God's name is holy? It will not be mocked. 
God will avenge his name, and he will also vindicate his people. Christians are pretty much mocked and ridiculed these days, but God, we, we entrust ourselves to God. We don't worry about that, because God vindicates his people. He will renew his creation. You know, I know we are to be good stewards of our resources here on planet Earth, but I want you to understand the Bible says that the earth will melt with a fervent heat, and God's going to start over with the new heavens and a new earth. So it's okay to recycle, but just know it's temporary. So it represents the deliverance of God, but also his judgment for the wicked, and it establishes his rule on the earth. Jesus will rule and reign on the earth. Literally, he will rule and reign. Right now, the kingdom of God is spiritual, but someday it will be literal on this earth. And so we need to, we need to understand these things and to trust what God is doing. It represents gloom and doom for the wicked, but hope and blessing for the righteous remnant. I want you to understand, no matter how the dark the darkness gets, no matter how wicked the world becomes, God always has for himself a righteous remnant of people. Sometimes it's secret, sometimes they're hidden, sometimes they're not visible, but God always has a people that are a righteous remnant, that hold on to the truth, that hold on to the Lord. We are not alone. Sometimes we may feel like it. You ever felt like the last Christian on planet Earth? Maybe you're the only Christian in your family. Maybe you're the only Christian at work. I went to three different high schools in three different states. Man, I hated being the new guy in school. And most of the time I felt like I was alone. There were no other Christians. And it was so exciting to find another Christian. I mean, a, a, a Christian that really loved the Lord, not just went to church, but served the Lord wholeheartedly. There's always a remnant. Don't ever feel like you're all alone. There is a remnant, a righteous remnant that God has preserved. Now, Elijah was a great prophet of God. He did mighty miracles. And yet, he struggled whenever the queen threatened his life and he ran for his life. And he was so discouraged, he wanted to die. I mean, Elijah, this great prophet of God, was so depressed, so discouraged, he asked God to kill him. And so God revealed himself, and it wasn't in the earthquake, it wasn't in the mighty wind, it was in a still small voice. And when God challenged Elijah, this is what happened in 1 Kings 19, 14. Elijah replied, because God said, what are you doing here out in, the no, out in the middle of nowhere, Elijah? He replies, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. <laughs> uh, the Israelites have rejected your covenant. I added the sniffing and stuff broken down your altars and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left. And now they're trying to kill me too. Do you see that whining? I mean, he's like, I've done everything right. I've served you, God. I've been there. I've said, Lord, this does not make sense. I've been faithful to you. Why is this happening? And that's what was going on with Elijah. He didn't get it. He's like, God, how could this be? And I'm, I'm the only one left. That's why I'm so discouraged. And now they're trying to kill me. And then the Lord said to him, verse 18, Yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal, and all those mouths who have not kissed him. And so Elijah felt alone. And I don't know about you, but we, you may feel outnumbered. We may feel outnumbered as believers in Jesus Christ. But God preserves a remnant of people that love him and serve him and are willing to give their lives for him. There's always a righteous remnant, and I want to challenge you to be a part of that remnant. Because the day of the Lord is coming, and we need to be that righteous remnant that is ready for his return. The remnant may be large or small, but there's always a remnant who remains faithful to God. The the rating of the countries that are most hostile to Christianity are on, on persecuted.com and, and also other websites that talk about the persecuted church. South, or North Korea is the, is the most dangerous place for a Christian to be. And another one is Iran. Very difficult, but we're hearing reports of revival breaking forth in Iran from women who are meeting in taxis. They can't meet in a church, so they're meeting and having church in a taxi, and the revival is breaking out. It doesn't matter if it's North Korea or Iran. God has a righteous remnant. And may he have a righteous remnant in this nation as well. Sometimes we feel alone. 
But the Lord always preserves a people for himself. And Jesus said in the end times that because of the increase in wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. You know, that, that chills me to think that in the end times, the love of most, that's speaking of believers and people, that their love for God will grow cold because of the increase of wickedness. But even when that happens, there will be a righteous remnant and there will also, I believe, be a great revival. The day of the Lord has two sides of the same coin. One side is judgment. The day of the Lord brings judgment. But the other side is salvation. Well, it brings judgment to the wicked, it brings salvation to the righteous. And the difference between the wicked and the righteous is repentance. You see, it doesn't matter what you've done or, or how far you've fallen. If you confess your sins to the Lord, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to restore us. But the key, the, the distinguishing between, in the day of the Lord, between the judgment on the wicked and the redemption of the righteous is all about repentance. And we're going to dig into that in the weeks ahead. The promised protection on the day of the Lord is conditional upon repentance manifested in meekness, humility, and righteousness. You see, true believers in Jesus Christ need not fear the day of the Lord. Oh, it's going to be serious. We're going to see some of the things that are going to happen. It's going to be major things. In fact, the Bible says that men's hearts will fail them because of fear. It'll be so drastic and so dramatic. But we as believers in Jesus Christ do not have to fear. We do not have to wring our hands and things may have not turned out like you hoped or I hoped or what's going on in politics or the world. You know, sometimes I gotta just turn the TV off and I gotta get off social media and get in God's word because sometimes the news and social media gets me angry and upset and discouraged, but God's word gives me life. And so we need, you know, it's hard to know what the truth is today. It really is hard to know what the truth is. And, and there's censorship and all these different things going on. Well, thank God we have the word of the Lord. It is not censored and it is always true. And so you, believer in Jesus Christ, do not be afraid. In fact, welcome it because it means our salvation and our deliverance. Number three. The timing of the day of the Lord. Oh, don't we want to know when it's going to happen? It's so amazing because we know the Bible has said no man knows the day or the hour. And yet people still write books and pick a day and an hour. Even though God's word says we're not going to know the day, we're not going to know the hour, but it is possible that we will know the season because Jesus said to look for the signs of the seasons and, and the things that are going on. So the question immediately arises, when is this day? How, you know, when will it come? In fact, is it the day of the Lord a literal day? Or is it more of a time span? Is it the beginning of a succession of events? Will this day occur more than once in the annals of humanity? Yes, to all of those things. In the Hebrew... The word day is yom, which is the most basic conception of time in the Old Testament. And it can refer to a literal 24-hour period of time, a given point of time, a lifespan, or a future period of consequential events. And so when you see the word day, it can be a literal day, or it can be an era of history, or it can be the... The, the last day. And I believe we're living in the last days. And there will be a literal day when Christ Jesus returns. Now, both Ezekiel and Zephaniah speak of the day of the Lord as being near. Well, you'll see this phrase a lot. The day of the Lord is near. The day of the Lord is near. So not only do we need to define the word day, we need to further define the word near. What does that mean? I'm glad you asked. Here it is in the Hebrew. The meaning of this word karob is used of nearness of place, like you're close to somebody, you're near someone, 
or a nearness of time, like it, you're, it's going to happen soon, or a nearness of relationship or kinship, you're close with your family, but the context in the case is a nearness of time. And so when you hear the day of the Lord is near, it is speaking of time. And Zephaniah adds to this meaning, this meaning in chapter 1, verse 14, by stating that the day of the Lord is near and coming quickly. Now, it's a phrase that warns that the day of the Lord is very near and it comes with great speed, especially for those who are unprepared or sigh for it as a panacea for all their troubles. In this sense, the day of the Lord is always imminent. It, Jesus could come any time. We have this sense of imminence. The day of the Lord can come at any time. But much, like much of biblical prophecy, its fulfillment can have more than one application in time. There are prophecies in the Old Testament that were fulfilled in the New Testament, but also have a final fulfillment at the end of time. And so much of Bible prophecy can have a dual fulfillment. A day of the Lord did arrive, in fact, for Judah and Jerusalem. They were, had been warned that the day is near, it's coming soon. And yes, Babylon finally conquered them, even though they didn't believe it could happen. It will come again just as swiftly and suddenly like a thief in the night. This thief in the night analogy is used more than once in Scripture. We already saw it in 1 Thessalonians. But it's mentioned again in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and, and everything in it will be laid bare. There it is. Therefore, there is more than one single day or era of time in which God reveals himself to humanity in this way. And that day may last longer than a 24-hour period. Now, my youngest daughter, Jessica, her birthday is February 28th. Mark it down. It's coming up because she wants everybody to know. Because she doesn't just have, she doesn't just celebrate the day. She celebrates the entire month. She doesn't have a birthday, she has a birth month, and she makes that known to all of us. And so it's not just a day, a, a day is not enough for her, she wants the whole month. And the day of the Lord is like that. It is, it is a day, but it also is a period of time that we're going to explore. The day of the Lord is both historical and eschatological. In other words, it has happened and it will happen again. It has come in the past and it will come in the future. The fourth point that we're going to explore in the weeks ahead is the signs of the day of the Lord. Jesus was faithful to let us know what, would, what was coming. He told us to watch for the signs we're also going to see several signs mentioned in the book of Joel. In fact, when Joel mentions that the Lord will pour out his spirit upon all flesh, Peter quotes that same verse at the day of Pentecost. How many of you know one of the signs of the end times is going to be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit like we've never seen before? I long for that. I want to see that happen in my time. I want to see it happen in the time of my children and my grandchildren. You know, we've those of us who are older in the Lord, more, more mature in the Lord, and I'm getting into that category, we've seen great moves of God. We've experienced revivals. I long for a fresh outpouring of the Spirit. Yes, I know there's going to be a great falling away. We already begin to see it happening. I'm shocked at, some, uh, at what is happening sometimes. And yet at the same time, we can believe God for a revival, especially in our own family, in our own lives, and in our church, and in our world. And so as we study the book of Joel, and we look at Matthew 24, we're going to learn about the day of the Lord and the signs that point to it. We're going to study these signs. So I just want to summarize with you before we go to communion. The day of the Lord represents key eras in human history. When God has manifested himself 
in a culmination of judgment for unrepented and long-term sin and the wickedness of a people when it has reached its full measure. And this judgment even results in a cleansing and purifying and preserving of the righteous remnant. How many know the Bible says that judgment begins in the house of God? So there needs to be a cleansing among us. There needs to be a repentance among God's people. Because it is a day of judgment, but it's also a day of blessing. It is a day of destruction, but it's also our day of deliverance. Bless God. The day of the Lord will come. And that final day when the Lord arrives, it will be doom and darkness for those who do not know God. But it will be joy and light. Light for those who are following Jesus Christ. That last day will spell the end of night forever for God's people. Look at, look at the promise we have in Revelation chapter 22. At the end of the book, I encourage you, the Bible, Revelation says, whoever reads and studies this book will be blessed. Read it. Study it. It is difficult. It is complex. But if you, if you seek after it, you will be blessed. It ends with these words toward the end of Revelation. Speaking of the new heavens and the new earth, there will no longer be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and His servants will serve Him. They will see His face, and His name will be on their foreheads, and there will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or even the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. How many can say with me, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. As we go to communion, I would like this to be a dedication of a new year for us, a dedication of our lives, renewed fresh to the Lord. We had no idea 2020 was going to turn out like it did. And we have no idea what 2021 could turn out like but we do have an idea who we trust and so I think it's a good time communion reminds us to rededicate our life and our heart to the Lord it's a new day it's a new year but we are going to draw closer to the Lord like never before if you'll take the bread I want to read from scripture and then we'll pray and partake together the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, this represents your body, your sacrifice, your life that you gave up willingly for us. And you've told us to never forget that we're to do this in remembrance of you. You were the spotless lamb. You were the final sacrifice. You paid the price for our sins. And so, Lord, we rededicate ourselves to you this day for this coming year, Lord. God, I pray that we would not face it with fear, but we would face it with faith. God, I pray that you would give us boldness Lord, that we would not be silenced, but God, that we would speak the truth in love. Lord, you've called upon us to be salt and light to this generation. And Lord, I pray the people around us would be drawn to the light in us, that they would, be thir they would thirst after the living water that we have because of Jesus Christ. So make us, Lord, that broken bread. Lord, make us the bread of life for those that are starving in this world our family, our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers, even the stranger we may run into with masks on in the mall. God, whatever it may be, may they see the light of Jesus Christ in our lives. We're not afraid of the days of darkness because we trust in the Lord our God. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Would you take the bread? In the same way after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death, three words, until he comes. And so even in communion, God does not want us to forget Jesus is coming again. And so every time we take communion, it's in remembrance of him, and it's also in remembrance of what he said, that he's coming back. I know that sounds crazy to people who don't know the Lord. It's like science fiction, but it's God's word, and Jesus said it. And so we believe it, and we trust it. We do this in remembrance of him until he comes, until that day, until that day, we remember him. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for your shed blood. There's no forgiveness without the shedding of blood, and you sh shed your blood on that cross for us so that we can be free. We don't have to live in guilt and regret. Our sins have been forgiven. They've been cast as far as the east is from the west. You remember our sins no more. Oh, God, thank you. If nothing else, thank you for that. Lord, that we are forgiven. We are forgiven. You don't hold our sins against us. Lord, we are free. And Lord, I pray with that liberty and freedom and that light of Jesus, God, that we would light up this dark world. Lord, that the church would arise, the, the church of God, the church of Jesus Christ, that we would arise in these days. We would not cower. We would not be silenced. But Lord, in your love and in your grace, we would proclaim the good news, the good news of Jesus Christ. We give you the glory. Amen and amen. Let's partake. Would you stand with me as I speak the blessing? We don't ever want to take this blessing for granted. God told the Levites, this is how you bless the people. So we're, we're doing it just as God told us to. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. You're free to remain in worship or you're free to go. God bless you.